Uh, welcome everybody to this week's Qubit Community Meeting. It is the 10th of July, 2024. Let me just find where chat is. And I'll post the agenda link in there. Uh, no, I want this to go to everyone. Okay. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm a little on the back foot because I'm not sharing my screen. I'm doing it slightly differently. Let me have a quick look. I don't see anyone new in the attendees. Um, if I am incorrect, please holler and uh, we'll give you a bit of time and space to introduce yourself. But for now, um, Arella, can you please click on the schedule check-in? So this is uh, pretty fresh. So there's not a lot to do. We've just started the 1.4. In fact, we don't even have 1.3 out to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I don't see Lubo here. Um, I haven't heard anything uh, about the 1.3 apart from we did have to push it out from last week. And it was scheduled to go out today. Uh, does anyone on this call know anything more than me on that, on the status of that? I'll take that as a no. Uh, the 1.4 release schedule, uh, dates to remember are the 22nd of October, are our feature freeze, and we've got the 12th of November, which is day one of KubeCon Cloud Next. All right, thank you, Aurel. And I can tell you what the upcoming CFP check-in looks like. Um, it's empty. Um, we've got one talk, which is I think Daniel Hill are talking at Container days in September. Does that sound right? Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> Is, isn't it you? I don't. I don't think so. Um, maybe I need to check again. Oh wait. Um, you know what? No, you're you're probably right. You know what? I'm looking at a historical view. Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I've been, <laughs> I've, I've talked at, uh, at Container in 2022. So um, that might be. Yeah. Actually, I, I, uh, I applied for Container Days, but I don't think I got in this time. So um, I figure I will not be. Ah, oh, shame. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let me see. Where are we? Events. I guess, yeah, Aurel, you may as well click on the link because um, I'm an idiot. Oh, there you are. Yep. Okay, I've gone and done something. So we could ignore that for now and I'll fix it. Daniel is unstoppable. I think he's talked at four or five conferences this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if KubeCon counts as talking. I mean, we've been talking a lot, right? So, but yeah, I, I didn't hold a talk, to be, to be honest. So, um, talking, yes. <laughs> but yeah, um, I've, I've been a couple of, uh, to a couple of conferences. I think maybe I need to recap probably also for the community. So what, what we talked about or what I talked about. But yeah, most of the things you are already familiar with. I'm not sure if there is much new. So, yeah, I'll, I can do that if you want. So um, I could prepare something if you want. Do you mean right now or for uh, a coming week? Um, yeah, rather for upcoming week. I don't know if I can, can just uh, figure it out of my head um, in detail that would be necessary. I could give a glance, but yeah, um, I don't think that would be like um, very good for everyone. So maybe I would say something that is uninteresting <laughs> and skip the interesting things somehow. So I would rather be focused on, on that one. Fair enough. Um, I think I also put your name down um, up the top. 
Uh, Ralph, if you could please slide all the way to the top of the overview. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, we do have a, um, oh, and slightly down a little bit, down to the box, we've got a, a table there, lightning talks. Um, uh, so this is a thing, I don't think I mentioned it in the last two weeks, but if you have a topic that you would like to present, um, and having seen the well, everything people have been talking about at Qubit Summit, um, people have a lot to talk about. Um, it can be two minutes, it can be 10 minutes, it can be even longer than that. Um, we've got one of the talks that um, I had to pull out from uh, Qubit Summit last minute, so I've got them there to follow up with. And uh, Daniel, I've put your name down for the guide to our testing framework, which we talked about oh, a week or two ago, I think. Um, I think it'd be really useful. I think it'd be particularly useful for us to uh, present in a way that we record and then put onto our YouTube channel to then point people towards, um, because I think it is, um, I think there's a lot of good understanding in the community about how it all works, but I think it's um, less transparent when you come new to it and you're not entirely sure what everything is. Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, I would still want to, uh, I mean, I, I can't like figure it out right now. If you, if you oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm that. Not okay. <laughs> That's good. There's that still... was a bit like a, like a, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. It doesn't have today's date next to your name. Okay. Um, okay. Something to figure out in the, in the coming weeks or months. Um, but I'll also to... uh, similar to the way that I self nominated Daniel in that, um, in that table. If anyone here is watching uh, in the meeting or later on on YouTube um, and you would like to learn about something uh, in this meeting, uh, again, whether it's two minutes or 10 minutes or 30 minutes, um, you can please put the topic there. And if you know a good uh, person to talk about it, if you want to self-nominate them, um, uh, by all means. And then we'll see if that person can come in and um, educate us all. Um, Daniel, you've got the first uh, and only couple of things on the agenda, so I'll leave it to you. Thanks, Andrew. So, um, yeah, my first um, uh, issue is or topic is like um, that we are going to announce that we are holding uh, 60i meetings in public right now. I mean, the 60i has been formed a bit ago. I'm not sure. I think a couple of months ago did the PR land and community repository. Um, uh, but yeah, we decided that we want to have like open meetings for the community to be able to join in if they have any concerns or uh, want want some support or something. Um, so this is like uh, there there is two meetings that you can join in. So the first one is Six CI Weekly, where we mostly talk about like uh, improvement of the CI overall. But yeah, also we take always take a look at at the flex. Um, and the second one is dedicated mostly to the flex. Um, so where we discuss about quarantining flex, whether this is uh, required or not. Um, the 6 CI weekly takes place Monday, 10 a.m. every Monday on CET, CEST. The quarantine catch up uh, meeting takes place every Wednesday, 9.45 a.m. CET, CEST. And yeah, everyone who is interested just wants to listen in or has actually um, things to bring up there, you're um, heartily welcome um, to, to just join in and chime in there. Um, uh, it's a quite a short meeting, but we'll, we'll all always find time. And if you want to help, of course, that, then you're highly welcome. So because like we can, we can always need a helping hand in things. Um, yeah, so you probably can uh, bestly check out the Qubit community calendar. All the appointments are there so that you can import them. Um, we've already announced this today via the Qubit Dev mailing list also. Um, and yeah, I have an open PR that is related to the 6CI label that is yet missing so that we can um, mark issues with uh, 6CI whenever we create them during that meeting. Um, which we agreed upon. Um, so um, in a nutshell, that's it. Um, is there anything unclear or other questions? Okay, I take that as a no. 
<laughs> Great. Um, so I can move right away to the next one, um, which relates to um, the other PRs that are open around like um, the six and working groups which we have or which we want to form. So there is an open PR with respect to S390X um, uh, related to working groups and um, also ARM. Um, but in that matter, I was uh, rightfully uh, um, asked by Andrew that we pr should probably be a bit more clear about the several roles that we introduced with that. And I started on a pull request that adds the SIG working group and subproject roles to the uh, contributors guide that we have, or the contributors document in the community repository. If anyone wants to check that out, please take a look at that and chime in there. Maybe there might be something that is unclear or something. So please chime in and, and um, uh, help us uh, get that uh, in. Um, the last one is that there is still the working groups templates uh, PR, which is also not yet gotten in. I would like to remind everyone that we would probably need a bit of uh, feedback on that and probably get that in. I think it's fairly done. But yeah, there might be people that might be uh, still wanting to chime in so that we have everything ironed out for a first start so that we have everything. Um, Andrew, did I forget anything? So <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, I know I owe you a review on, on your most recent PR. You're not going to get it this week. I can assure you of that. Sorry. <laughs> It's all good. I, I uh, appreciate every comment on that one so that we can get that good because I'm, I'm not a native speaker and I would like to iron out especially those things that might be unclear from a native speaker's point of view. So if anyone um, has a bit of bandwidth to look over that, that would be great and highly appreciated. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, I guess just to follow on a little bit from that, um, everyone's here, I guess, because they care about this community. And this is a really important part of, of growing and making sure that we have a, a like clearly understood um, roles for people to, to grow into and take responsibility for. And so it's, I think it's in everyone's vested interest to um, have an opinion on this, or if not an opinion, then a thumbs up. Oh, on that note, um, I... Uh, recently came a question came to my mind. I think we have like a couple of uh, SIG labels, for example, like the SIG code quality label and also the SIG network label. Networking is obviously clear who uh, actually owns that. But what I would like to remind people on is that the SIG YAML probably would miss um, shares and sub project leads for those. So maybe we could come up with something. And I was other um, on the, on another note. I wasn't really sure whether the like the sick code quality is really a sick, or rather like uh, this is rather like a um, like a kind of uh, label. So like kind bug, kind code quality. If that sounds more right, probably maybe people might want to give their opinions also. Um, here, if, if I can ask for that. Opinion where? Opinion about whether the code quality itself is rather a SIG, which then would at some point require probably someone to lead that effort. Um, and on, on that note, like following up on that, we would need to be discussing who will that be and uh, who will probably, if need be, facilitate meetings and so on in the open. So that that's my ask is, is, a, is the code quality SIG, is that a righteous label in that regard that there is a SIG code quality? And on that note, who leads that? That's my question, actually. Yeah, I thought that you would ask, uh, you ask to where to discuss it. I will. Oh, yeah, I was, I was just asking right away because I thought okay. I just wanted to get clear on that one since that SIG code quality label is quite a while in action somehow. And I've seen a couple of PRs on that. And I, I like I said, I agree 
that this is a good label to mark P uh, PRs at code quality, but this still brings me to the point, is there a SIG that is somehow like um, a group of people that is actually following up on code quality? And then if that is so, then who is going to lead that? That's just my question. Well, yes, there is a, an unofficial uh, group of, uh, of contributors that are handling it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not yet well organized and I'm and the question if it's a SIG or not, it's a good question. Uh, I think based on the introduction of what we know that it's a SIG now and the working groups and sub projects, we could evaluate this again if it's, it should be called a SIG or something else. Mm -hmm. I think it's a valid uh, discussion. But we'll have to come with, uh, I guess we need to come ready for this discussion. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't want to like uh, uh, bother anyone with uh, getting on that right now because we are still somehow forming um, everything around that. And I think like we, we still need, we still need a bit of feedback on how all this works. But yeah, in general, my understanding was that we somehow agreed to follow up the how Kubernetes does it. And they actually require chairs to lead the six and um, uh, leads to lead the sub project. So that, that's my question. Um, yeah, but maybe, maybe we can probably discuss that on the mailing list. I, I'm going to ask this question probably on the mailing list again, and then let's see um, what feedback we get from that one. Yeah, just trying to capture that Thanks. there. Um, great. Yeah, great question about whether or not it's a, a kind or a SIG. Um, and if I could uh, jump on the back of that as well, your question about the use of labels. Um, with the, sorry, a bit of metal. Um, with the, train of thought, the evolution of these SIGs, uh, which is continuing, um, uh, I think the usage of the SIG labels and um, is, I think, now more important than ever, um, as well as the kind labels. Uh, these all exist, and it really helps uh, the person, uh, namely me, who organizes the release notes every time uh, we release um, and separates the roughly 100 or so things um, into uh, useful uh, groupings. And if we have a reliable usage of these uh, labels, we could automate that process and it would be um, much better for everyone, I think. Uh, and on that note, if anyone is interested in helping automate that process, um, I can't do it, so I need help. And um, yeah, it would be really great. It would be um, a very useful thing for the project, putting it out there. Don't know nominated ones. Um, uh, just, what did I miss? Which events have you been referring to? Um, it's the mistake. <laughs> so I got confused. Um, it's container days, which Daniel has spoken at, but it's Fabian who's giving the talk for the following one. Um, and then I thought I, I'd accidentally erased the history of that event to 2022, but I haven't. It's still 2024, um, even on the Wiki events page. Uh, there is not another Qubit Summit for until next year, but uh, we do have the option of nominating uh, lightning talk, self-nominating or nominating someone else on a subject uh, for this meeting. Um, maybe that's what we're talking about. Oh. That one, the lightning talk. So you want to have a slot for lightning talk in this meeting? Yes. Uh, if you have okay. a look on the side, we've got lightning talks as part of the overview. There's a little table there, um, and you can, if you, if there's something that you know that has been has turned up in Kubert and you'd like to hear someone talk about what it is, so you can better understand it, or if you've worked on something that you think should be shared with the community, um, if you put your name there, we can find a time uh, in this meeting to talk about it. 
It's an idea I um, unabashedly ripped off the SIG storage meeting. Pull requests. We have a couple here. I think the first two are from triage. Um, it's from last week. It looks very much like a SIG storage. Yeah, can assign to me. Excellent. Um, Andrew, do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that while you get move on to the next one. What did I miss? There is a person replacing the PMI definition in a unit test uh, with the new libvmi. I think we can even mark it with the same code quality label. Perfect. In which case, you could even self-assign while you're there. So thank you. And the third one I can speak to because it's mine. Um, yeah, basically, uh, this is an issue raised a little while ago. Um, the video section of my website was really out of date, basically. And so I've gone through and I've um, updated a bunch of the playlists and I've updated some of the links and I've made it so that uh, whatever is embedded will always be the most recently published item. And I've linked to a bunch of stuff and I've added some more information. We don't need to look at it now, but uh, if I could please get some eyes on that um, uh, to get it merged because it's currently a little sad. And it's all just uh, um, HTML markdown. Okay, there's a couple of things on the mailing list. Oh, we're still looking at this. Yep, so I don't know if you've seen, um, there's a bit of an FYI, uh, this email from Felix about, um, yeah, dropping support for certain connections with the Ansible collection. Um, he's asking for feedback on whether the, I guess the deprecation model that he's uh, suggesting uh, seems reasonable to everyone else. This is another FYI. Um, so uh, this comes from an issue, I think, oh, yeah, uh, 239. Um, there are... 25 inactive repos in that they have not had anything done to them in between two and I think is it eight years or nine years is the grand champion. I scroll down a tiny bit. Eight years. Um, uh, yeah, we would very much like to uh, archive these. Uh, and as Daniel points out, just because something is archived doesn't mean the information in them can't still be taken out, although I wouldn't personally recommend it. Um, also, they can be unarchived, de-archived. Um, but yeah, if anything there is um, 
should not be archived for whatever reason, or if it is something that you personally would like to um, be responsible for and take ownership of and have it continue on its merry way, please let us know before, I believe I said the 25th of July. So there's still another two weeks on that. Um, if not, we'll just, I guess, bulk archive um, all of the ones listed there. Any questions? Arel. Thank you. So I wanted to raise a little issue I've created last week. This one is about the example VM manifests that we have under the examples directory. So they are using a, a bit older API, let's say, like running instead of the newer, newer, it's from 2019. Um, running strategy or one strategy, I don't remember the exact name of the field, one strategy. And the CPU topology is missing and the guest memory is missing. And if we will update it, it would look something like the example we have here. And uh, this whole thing is uh, auto-generated by, auto by a tool under tools VM generator. So we need to consider if we want to keep it or do we want to create the examples manually? This is something that I think is worth discussion. Anyone wants to raise their opinion here or in the issue, I would highly appreciate it. Can you, I don't understand what is the suggestion? The suggestion is instead of having this is the current uh, spec. Here you have running, and you don't have the CPU and memory uh, specification under the domain. But here, on my suggestion, you can see instead of running, we have the run strategy field, and we have the CPU topology and the guest memory. This is like the newer. Could you please come again, buddy? Sorry, Aurel. Um, that that works without this uh, additional fields, right? I mean, it's it should. Possible. It works, okay. yes. So, what is the? Uh, I, I think, uh, in general, we strive to to provide the minimal amount of YAML that you need to write um, in order to start a VM. So, I guess uh, my my question is, why do we need to specify like defaults? It's not just default, it's a way of, you know, getting a visual representation of the API that you can get, like, this is how you expect, I think, pers people who use Kubeville to, to use it. Like not to have a good, I mean, not have exactly. a good example. Yeah, so I mean, if we would change um, the topology to be something other than one one one, then it would make sense. But uh, if the topology is just uh, like a single socket, I mean, obviously you will get the same uh, topology by default. Uh, so I don't know, like, why would you um, like bother to add this information and to like write a given even more expressive YAML. But if we want to um, write something non-standard and provide this as an example, then yeah, and I would expect then uh, the VM uh, to be generated, uh, the uh, VM generator to generate the right example for it. Thank you, Ray. You also wanted to say something. Eddie, I think you opened your mic. No, I, wa I was wondering. Uh, actually, this this like if I'm taking one step back, I I did not understand why do we have this? Uh, why why this code is gener auto generated? I don't understand. Like, if we if we want to show examples of things, uh, why it's not why it's not managed by just uh, 
creating the YAML themselves. And then if, if we want to check their validity to just uh, pass them through some API unit test or even run an end-to-end -end test that uses them. I don't understand why they are, why, what, what is that code that generates them useful for? I maybe useful for generating maybe, examples. <laughs> what? It's useful for generating examples. So we'll have examples of whatever API we're changing uh, available in our repo. And yeah, but why the... do I need a code to do that? Why can someone just add the fields in a YAML? Why do I need to manage the code and not the uh, YAML? Because if the API to... changes, um, then you want to keep this updated. Yeah, so can, can't we just unit test the, or unit test or even end-to-end -end test the, this is examples? Yes, we do. No, not to, so not to test the generator. I mean, to test the YAMLs themselves. We do. For example, let let I I will take the example here, where I see it's broken. Like the the fact that you have a run uh, running right in the VM, that's that's bad. It's like we instead of telling the users that they should use the run strategy, we tell them to use some some field that is probably we are we were supposed to deprecate it, and at least at the minimum, not. Uh, not not make it uh, an, an example of it but i'm sure there are many fields here that may be deprecated and no one is removing them so but it's not it's not deprecated yet right i mean we didn't remove it from from the spec yes but we are it, it's we still are, there what, so the moment so this accurate uh, in terms of uh, validity uh, no no but it will be the example anyway it will be there anyway, even if you the the, the deprecation itself, it, you will still be able to use it. That's a that's also valid. Like let's say that we deprecate it and we say we don't encourage you to use it. But then... this is not about encouragement. I mean, this this uh, generator generates an example of uh, the current API. Um, if we don't want to use it, then we need to change uh, something in the in the way that we create those APIs. I mean, this is probably not a discussion for right now, but uh, what I'm just trying to say is that the generator uh, automatically generates examples of the API that we currently support. Um, and uh, and this is useful for a lot of people and was useful for a lot of people until now. I mean, if we want to change the way um, it generates those, um, sure, we can, we can do oh, that. I just... I, I, I'm asking, just, just a question is, if if we move, can we, what is the disadvantage of moving this to a, sorry, one second. Sorry, it's, I'm, my question is, what is the disadvantage of just managing the YAMLs instead of the code they generate? The disadvantage is that if some something is like removed, deprecated, or uh, or added, we are in in a, we will be not in sync with the examples. That was the point. Yes, it's exactly like with the user guide. Uh, here we can okay. automatically do that, and um, I, I don't see a reason why not to take advantage of something that's automatically generated. Maybe we need to enhance this or add the, the different examples. Like for example, the CPU struct, uh, it's it's useless if it's just like with default values, uh, one, one, one. But I mean, if we'll add other parameters, then it will be much more useful. Okay, any other opinions from anyone? I guess not. Thank you for the discussion. We have another bug. 
uh, I didn't get a chance to uh, give this a read at all, but it looks very serious. It doesn't make sense. This is the UID of the node? Or, or what? I thought it was VMI. Oh, you're right. Or maybe they... It's... I don't understand how it's related to migration. I mean, either they use kind or something like that. That and they didn't. They didn't take care of the of this part. I remember there is a problem with this that you need to take care of, or they use the same VMs that are nodes and they, they are identical, including the system UID. But I'm not sure if this is what they mean. Who would like to follow up with this bug? I think it should be labeled as C compute. He's not here, so I might tag Stu. And for these two, it looks like uh, Luba's gone ahead and fixed two flaky tests related to memory hot plug and CPU hot plug. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to, to speak to this, Luba being absent. The important thing is we survived. I mean that a flaky text, flaky test was fixed. So that brings us to, um, and yeah, hooray. Now that is always a, a positive. That brings us to the end of today's agenda. Um, unless anyone wants to, and some party emojis from Daniel. Um, if anyone wants to add anything, ask anything, or just have anything, just in general, just say before we wrap up.
I'll take the stern silence as a no. Um, but perhaps we can all remind Arel that it has been over a year since he looked at his GitHub recovery codes and it might be worthwhile him doing that, if only to avoid the annoying banner from appearing on his screen. Um, thank you all very much for joining us here today and for everything you do in the community. Hope you have a lovely continuation of your day wherever you are and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for hosting, Andrew. See you. Bye. Oh, and thanks, Aurel. He's gone. <laughs>